So what do you make of McConnell telling his so-called surrender caucus to not challenge the, the Electoral College results? It's, it's disgraceful. Frankly, it's, it's, it's a real capitulation uh, when one shouldn't be there. I mean, Mitch McConnell has to thank President Trump for in caucus, both in the House and the Senate, uh, and for him to turn coat like this uh, is, is really, really disgraceful. I'll tell you that, um, you know, all you need is one congressperson and one senator, as you mentioned, and we have some senators, we have no shortage, hopefully, of, of members of the House who are going to step up and object, and the objection would be based, uh, say, on the grounds that the election was not lawfully certified, that those electors were not properly elected because of fraud, because of the Constitution, all of those different reasons we've heard so much about. We can expect uh, Mo Brooks has spoken out about him being willing to speak up about it. We have Matt Gates from Florida who's going to. We can expect Mike Kelly from Pennsylvania. But when we get to the Senate, we haven't had anybody who actually step up to bat right now. We thought possibly Ron Johnson was going to today. He seemed to have been uh, sort of browbeaten by Mitch McConnell and uh, has, has been brought back into the Republican uh, establishment fold. So I think we're going to have to look hopefully to Rand Paul, uh, possibly to Josh Hawley from Missouri, who has expressed openness to the idea. But you know what? This is such an important uh, step, this, this objection uh, and this process. Uh, and it's really in the hands of the Congress and the Senate right now to determine the outcome of this election. And this isn't some sort of overthrow. This is our constitutional system. This is the system that Congress passed since going back to, to 1876 uh, within a, in a congressional statute. So this is following the law. This is not bucking the law. And for Mitch McConnell to suggest otherwise is really traitorous. And talk to me more about January 6th. That's the big deadline on many people's minds. How are the different ways that that could go, especially as we know that about seven states, seven of the battleground states have sent dual electors to Congress? Right. So... Uh, the law provides for uh, a few different contingencies. One is where uh, states send different slates of electors to Congress. Then it's up to Congress to decide which slate that they're going to count, which votes that we voted on the 14th, which of those votes they're going to count. So if the Houses, meaning the Senate and the House of Representatives, can't agree then uh, in some circumstances, it could go to the governor of that state to decide, to be the tiebreaker. In other instances, the law is a little unsettled on this point. Uh, it may not, in fact, go to the, the governor at all for a time. And if they can't agree, then those electoral votes don't get counted at all. So that means that you might have, in that circumstance, you might have uh, one of the candidates or both of the candidates not rising to the level of 270 electoral votes. Uh, and the third way that could happen is if you get this one senator and one congressman, if they've agreed on a slate, then you can object to a particular electoral vote or to the entire slate. And as you mentioned before, when an objection is lodged, both houses have to retreat to their respective chambers. They get two hours to deliberate and then they have to vote. And if a simple majority supports the objection in both houses, then that slate of electors is tossed out. So what could happen is if you can't get any candidate to 270, which is a majority of the total 538 electoral votes, it goes into what's called a contingent election. And that's under the 12th Amendment. It goes to the House of Representatives to decide who the president will be. And they do this by a delegation of states. So each state gets one vote. So if you count up the number of Republican districts and Democrat districts, it breaks out that the Republicans have a majority of the state delegations. They have 26 state delegations are majority uh, and, and, and a minority to the Democrats. So if it goes to the House in a contingent election, through any of those means we, I just mentioned, then Donald Trump would be the victor.